Good morning and welcome to church. This is the day that the Lord has made and we have no other choice but to rejoice and to be glad in it. Amen. In the midst of everything that's going on, we still have a responsibility to praise God. If God's been good to you, come on, just put it in the chat, declare it in the atmosphere. God, he's been good to me. It's been rough. It's been tough. But yeah, God's been good to me. I got to admit it this morning. Amen. We're going to go right into prayer. Amen. Good morning to all of our conference call family, all of our Zoom family, Facebook family. Amen. And our YouTube family. It's good to see all of you in worship this morning. Amen. And in spite of COVID-19 and Omicron and everything else, how many of you know, amen, that the Lord has yet been good to all of us? And we just pause this morning, amen, just to tell him thank you and to hear what he has to say to us from his holy word. Amen. I see you. Amen. Please like and share. Invite as many people as you can. Amen. So that we all can worship God together. Well, let's go into prayer. Many of you were on uh, our prayer talk yesterday with Sister Glad in the prayer ministry. And so you know that there's power and there's purpose in prayer. And the Bible says that we ought to pray without ceasing for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. So we want to open with prayer this morning. And I want to challenge you seriously to develop a strong prayer life and to never stop praying, even when things don't turn out the way that you want them to, or when God doesn't give you the answer that you want, I'm telling you, don't stop praying because prayer, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. If we can pray for you in any special way today, amen, we invite you to put it in the chat or you can always call us or email us at our uh, church contact information. And we would love to uh, come into agreement with you in prayer. Amen. But we're going to pray this morning that God will move in your life and in our worship experience in a powerful way. So create a space wherever you are so that God can speak to you and so that we can pause this morning to pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this day and for this opportunity to rise, Lord, to be able to breathe, to have our heart beating. Lord, we thank you for another week that you have brought us through. We thank you, Lord, for the challenges that we've had to face for the victories that we have won we thank you lord for the smiles that we were able to have and even for the tears that we had to shed thank you god for the uphill battles and we thank you lord for the easy times because god we know that ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time and a season for everything under the heavens and it's not always going to be good it's not always going to be easy but sometimes we have to go through some things in order to grow stronger in you so lord we don't come with the spirit of complaint we don't come, Lord, with the spirit of anger. We're not offended, Lord, because we have to go through. Lord, we count it an honor to go through, to suffer for the cause of Christ. So, Lord, I pray that you will build us up in our most holy faith, that we will, Lord, not think that you don't love us because, Lord, we are facing something, that we are, Lord, being punished because we are, God, going through something. But, Lord, we will see it as an opportunity to experience you in a greater way. Father, I thank you for every person that is on this morning, for those who are called in, who have dialed in, for those, Lord, who have logged in and hopped in on various platforms. And Lord, I thank you that, Lord, in spite of all that is going on, we still see the importance of going to church. Yes, Lord, church is still the best thing. You are still the best thing going in this world. Everything else, Lord, is a, 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 oh God, everything else, Lord, is, is, fake and phony and fraudulent, but you are the real thing. And that's why we showed up this morning. We showed up, God, to experience the real thing. I pray, oh God, that you will meet us at our point of need. I pray, oh God, that you, Lord, will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. I pray, Father, that you, God, will touch us where we need you to touch us the most. Lord, whether we're on conference call, Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, Lord, whether we're at home in our car, at work, God, I pray that your spirit will touch each person this morning in a special way. Father, we are we showed up this morning because we need you. 
We showed up this morning, God, because we are willing to admit that we can't do this life on our own. We showed up this morning, God, because we understand that, God, without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. And so, Father, our prayer is simply move in us. God, move in us that you will get the glory. Move in us, God, and take out anything that is not pleasing you. God, move in us and touch us, God, so that we can be greater and better today than we were yesterday. And God, if you wake us up tomorrow, we'll be better tomorrow than we were today. Father, that's our prayer, not for more stuff, but God, more of your spirit. Not, God, for more materials, but more of your manifested glory in our lives. Lord, because we know if we seek you first and the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you promised us that all the other stuff will automatically be added to us. Father, do not let us get addicted and fascinated with the materialistic. But, Lord, help us to stay focused on you, God, and you only. Knowing, God, if we stay focused, Lord, you're going to do everything else that we need you to do. Thank you, Lord that even in the midst of a pandemic, you're still getting the glory. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God, you are still protecting us and providing for us and shielding us. And Lord, even if we caught it, God, you've covered us, that Lord, we're not six feet under this morning, but we are six feet above ground. And we thank you for that. I pray, oh God, for every teacher, every student, God, for those who are on our prayer list, God, those who are at home right now dealing with all kinds of illnesses and loss and grief and bereavement. God, those who are dealing with loneliness, Lord, those, Father, who are dealing with anxiety and stress. I pray, Father, whether it's emotional, financial, God, whether it's in their family, I pray, Father, that you, God, will remind each of us that you have never left us. You have never forsaken us. You are with us always, even in a pandemic. You are with us always. Father, so many of our family, God, have been diagnosed just this week with COVID-19. And we know that there's nothing greater, nothing stronger than the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare and decree healing that you promised us in your word. In Isaiah 53, you said you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, that the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. And we declare that and we release it into the atmosphere over our family. God, even now that you will touch, heal, deliver them in a miraculous way. Father, for this worship experience, I pray, Father, that you will touch us. Give us a word that we need, God, that will push us to our eternal destiny. Father, that will move us from where we are to where you want us to be. Lord, we lift up, God, those who are suffering, God, those who are going through homeless and incarcerated. Lord, those who Father, are suffering from all sorts of mental illness. God, we pray for those, Lord, who have uh, seen devastation from this uh, um, tsunami. Oh, God, those who are just dealing with all kinds of God issues. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you will touch them and let them know that somebody is praying for them. And you told us, God, where any two or three are touching and agreeing on anything that you will be in the midst. And we receive that now that you are with us. You have not left us and we are not by ourselves. We are not alone. We are not by ourselves out here. You are with us to strengthen us and to sustain us, God, and to push us and to carry us when we're too weak to walk. Move now, Lord. Save somebody. Heal somebody. Deliver somebody. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And praise God. Good morning. Good morning once again to all of you. Amen. I pray that you've had a blessed week, that the Lord has shown himself to you in some way. Amen. I see the prayer requests and we're going to lift them up throughout the week. Amen. That God will move in a miraculous way. Remember, we're believing God this year to do what? To blow our minds. Amen. And we believe that God is going to do it. And if you have the faith, guess what? If you have the faith, God can do it. Amen. Well, let's go very quickly to our announcements. Today is Buds of Promise Sunday and Victoria Richardson Day. And so we shout out all of our children uh, within our denomination. The Buds of Promise are all of our children ages zero to 12. And our uh, wise or Victoria Richardson, who founded the wise, is all of our children 12 to 21, all of our youth and young adults 12 to 21. And so shout out to all of them. Amen. We got their uh, Buds of Promise green on the screen. Amen. So shout out to all of our Buds of Promise. And in recognition of Buds of Promise Sunday, amen, please remember that My Buddy magazine is featuring the Western District in its next edition. Amen. And so these submissions are for children ages zero to 12. Uh, and it can be in the form of an essay, a short story, a poem, or even a draw. We have talented children. So we encourage parents to please uh, submit 
uh, something for, from your children. And you can email those to Victoria Fisher period Zion at gmail.com. Again, email all of that Victoria Fisher period Zion at gmail.com. If you have grandchildren, amen, and they watch, they may not have joined. Amen. We are, we believe that we are all a part of the church of God and you want them to participate. Amen. Sit down with them, get theirs together. Amen. And then send that to us so that they can be a published author and artist. Amen. So if you need more information, please email Victoria Fisher period Zion at gmail.com. Please remember that every Sunday at 830 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Again, all of our times are Pacific Standard Times. Uh, you can join us for Sunday school. The number access code passcode one six six nine nine zero zero nine one two eight. Access code is six nine one one six one zero eight eight seven. And a passcode of one, two, three, four. Once again, a worship service is every Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we uh, thank you for staying with us throughout the transitions and the shifts. Amen. Thank you for staying with the ship. Amen. And we look forward to being able to reassemble together in person very soon. Please remember that our prayer ministry is every morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And the number is 425-436-6351. And an access code of 484096. Uh, please uh, join Bishop Thompson and the entire Western Episcopal District every morning, Monday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for a time of prayer. The number is 1605313-5111 and a passcode of 496160. You can never pray enough. Amen. And whenever you can assemble with the body of Christ to pray, Amen. It's, 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 it helps strengthen our prayer life. So get those numbers down. Wake up in the morning. And even if you are not a morning person, dial in. Amen. Go back to sleep and let the prayers permeate your atmosphere. Amen. So please get that down. Uh, today, amen, is Victoria Richardson and Maria Clinton Day observances. Amen. And so we celebrate all of our youth and all of our children. Amen. And I pray that they are doing well in school. And remember, if you ever need anything, for your babies, amen. Even for our newest member, we want to shout out our newest member, little Israel, amen. The son of Trinity Williams, who was born last week, amen. And we were able to send some beautiful things to celebrate the birth of that baby. So we shout out our newest member, who is our newest buds of promise, Israel. Can y'all say happy birthday to Israel, amen, as he just entered the world. So we thank God once again. The church is not dying, your concept of church may be dying. But the Lord is adding to his church. And we thank God. And the great grandmama is on here. Amen. Hey, great grandmama Suzette. Praise God. Thank God for our newest member. Please remember today is the trial sermon of Brother Keith Johnson. It will be at noon. Amen. It'll be on Zoom and YouTube. And we're going to share that to our Facebook platforms. I pray that you will keep him in prayer as he embarks in ministry. And again, if you would like to join us via Zoom, uh, and I'm asking our leaders certainly to be on uh, the number is again one six six nine nine zero zero nine one two eight. An access code of six nine one one six one zero eight eight seven, and a passcode of one two three four. Amen. Please, amen. Let's support whenever the Lord pushes someone, amen, to the next level. Amen. We need to grab on and support them because as God is elevating people to the next level, and we support them, God will also elevate us to our next level. Amen. So please join us today at noon. Amen. Via Zoom, YouTube, and it'll also be shared on our uh, Facebook platforms. Tomorrow, please remember, we're having a brief members meeting at 6 p.m. I know what it said on the letter, but uh, we're going to move the election to uh, late February, early March. But please be on for our members meeting to deal with something specific tomorrow. And again, it's going to be via Zoom. Uh, and the number is 1669-900-9128. I think y'all know it. Amen. Access code of 691-1610887 and a pass code of 1234. And again, that's tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. Tuesday and every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is our Bible study. Uh, you can join us on YouTube and Zoom. And we're in the book of 1 Corinthians, studying trouble in the church. Amen. And so we look forward to you studying the word of God with us on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Lastly, next Sunday uh, after worship service, we're having our district uh, fifth Sunday fellowship and it will be on Zoom. Uh, we'll have that for you next Sunday. Uh, and I will be preaching that. So I would love to see all of your faces. Amen. As we worship with our 
uh, district next Sunday. And I want to thank all of you who prayed and supported yesterday for the Cascade District Conference, which continue to pray for our presiding elder. I feel in for her as she was funeralizing her niece. So good to see so many of your faces on to support not just me, but to support our brothers and sisters in Oregon and Washington. Amen. As we prepare for the word of God, we are right back in Matthew chapter 14. Verses 22 through 33. Amen. Our theme, our focus, our sermon series for this month is a divine dare. Amen. Stepping out on uncharted waters. And so I invite you to turn with me there uh, as we are blessed with a selection. This is the parent body theme song. I looked it up so I know I'm right on the whnoms.org site. Amen. So the song is on as we celebrate the buds of promise and the Victoria Riches and Day. I want us to sing together the hymn of the church. Lift them up, which is the theme song for the parent body of the Women Home and Overseas Missionary Society. Let's praise God together. Can we thank God? I thank God for a mom and Amy Zion Church in Nightdale from my home area, amen, who has allowed us to use their videos, amen, as we transition from in-person to virtual this month, amen. Shout out to Dr. Atlas and Reverend Atlas 
and the Amana family. Want to say good morning to our bishop, amen, and missionary supervisor, amen, who are on this morning. And to all of you, once again, we're going to get right into the word of God, amen. And if you will say amen, I promise you, I'll let you off real fast, amen. Amen. We have been in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33 this month, studying from the theme or the sermon series of a divine dare going out, moving from where we are to where God would have us to go. And we learned on the first Sunday that often the opportunities come in the storm. And then the second Sunday, we studied stalemate or not being able to move because of the people that are around us. Last week, we looked at summons. And this week, I want to show you how how to move in the midst of it. I wish somebody would declare that I'm going to move in the midst of it. I'm going to move in the midst of it. In spite of my diagnosis, in spite of the report, in spite of my issues, in spite of my pain, in spite of my past, I'm going to move in the midst of it. If you're waiting for the right opportunity, I'm telling you, now is the right opportunity to bust a move. Is now is the right opportunity to bust a move. Well, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 14 and verse 29. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 29. I see you. That's why I'm going to move in the midst of it. I might not have good credit, but I'm going to move in the midst of it. I might not be as good as I want to be, but I'm going to move in the midst of it. I might be in the storm of my life. But I'm going to move in the midst. Of, I'm not staying here. Not going to stay. No, ma'am. No, sir. I'm about to bust the move. That's right, brother. Glenn. I'm going to bust the move through faith in 2022. I'm not going to be where I am this time next year. Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 29. And the only verse that we'll have today. So I, I shouldn't be long. You know, the older you get as a minister. I remember when I was going to church. You know, church will start at 11 o'clock and you look at the clock and be 145 and you were still up. And you said, Lord, I wish the preacher would just hurry up and sit. And I said, when I get the pastor, I would preach about 15 minutes and let the folk go. But the older you get, the more you have to say. Amen. But I'm going to get y'all off of here. Amen. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 29. It says, he said, well, Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. And came, hey, Pastor McDaniel, my best friend, best man, to Jesus. So Peter, look at verse 20. I don't want you to miss this. Got out of the boat. Oh, yes, he did. And walked on the water and came to Jesus. <laughs> well, with your prayers and certainly with the aid of the Holy Spirit, you got to stay with me this morning. I want to talk about Peter's feet. Peter's feet. Can somebody put it in the chat for somebody who's going to watch later? Peter's feet. Oh, yeah. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this time that you've given us to hear your word. And we stand and sit in anticipation to hear what you have to say. We know we can't live, Lord, by chicken wings and collard greens alone. But your word says, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You said, God, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we showed up this morning to hear the good news. We showed up this morning, God, to hear a word from you. And I pray, oh God, in response to this word, that it will fall on fertile soil of our heart. That, Lord, we will not just be hearers of your word, but doers of the same. And Lord, there's one here that's not saved. I pray that you would draw them by your loving kindness. One God that has been living in a backslidden slate. I pray, oh God, that you will draw them by your loving kindness. But most of all, Lord, there's one that does not have a family to call their own. I pray, God, that you will draw them by your loving kindness. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I Peter's feet. Did y'all hear me on Zoom? I said Peter's feet. Now, last Sunday you understand, we talked about how Peter was on the boat with 
these 12 or 11 other brown brothers, that they had just seen Jesus do this multiplication ministry or this multiplication miracle on the land where he took two fish and five loaves of bread and he fed over 5,000 individuals. So much so that he fed them and there was leftovers and they packed up the leftovers and put them on the boat. And the Bible says that Jesus commanded them to get on the boat and go to the other side. Peter is on this boat with 12, with 11 other of his brown brothers. And they're trying to get to the other side. They're trying to go where Jesus has commanded them to go. And in the midst of all of that, this is just a review. A storm comes up. Now, Jesus is not on the boat with them. He's gone to the mountain to pray. He sends them on this boat seemingly by themselves. And as they're going where God commands them to go, as they're going where Jesus commands them to go, a storm comes up. Now, I want to make sure that we review that and that we make note of that every Sunday, because a lot of us think that when we make a decision to follow Christ and when we sell out to him and when we get involved in ministry and when we hearken our ear to the voice of of God, that life is supposed to be easy, that life going, is going to get so much less stress and, and everything's going to be dandy. But I want you to know that when you decide that you're going to go where Jesus commands you to go, you're going without fail to encounter a storm. Now, I need to pause right there and, and just get a witness check to make sure that I'm not talking to myself or by myself. Can anybody in here in the Zoom room, get Facebook room, glory to God, YouTube room? room that can attest. I'm doing what the Lord has asked me to do. I have, I'm have. i going where God has commanded me to go. And without fail, a storm came up. I'm telling you this morning that as you follow Christ, a storm is going to come up to try to knock you off balance. A storm is going to come to try to make you lose your faith in Jesus. But I came to let you know that when the storm comes, that's the opportunity to see Jesus in a greater way. And many of us, we would not know Jesus the way we do, and we would not have the same kind of praise that we have now. We wouldn't have the same kind of tenacity for Jesus and the things of God that we do now if God had not shown himself in the midst of the storm. We wouldn't know that God is a healer. We wouldn't know that God is a deliverer. We wouldn't know that God will open a door. We wouldn't know that God will supply needs when we don't have the money. We wouldn't know that God is able to do even ex exceedingly past our prayers. I'm telling you, if you look back over the course of your life, there are moments in the midst of the storm where God has blown your mind. I wish I had a witness right there, but I got to talk about Peter's feet because Peter is on this boat in the storm. Jesus is walking on the water in the midst of the storm and the brothers are shocked because they think it's a ghost that's walking on the water. And they have this conversation. Jesus says, don't be afraid. Take heart. It's me. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, then let me come out there and walk on the water with you. When's the last time you asked God, God, it, it, I want to be a participant in this. I, I don't want you to just do it for me, but I want you to do it with me. But, 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 but he says, God, if it's you, Jesus, if it's you, then help a brother out and let him come out and walk on this water. Have you ever asked yourself, why would Peter want to walk on the water? Wouldn't it seem safer to stay on the boat in a storm than to step out in the midst of winds and waves to attempt something that nobody else has ever done? Wouldn't it be safer to Go to the bottom of the ship and hope that the storm passes so that we can go to the other side. I'm telling you this morning, and I raised that question because many of us think that the safe space is the safe space. Many of us think that the comfort zone is the comfort zone. Many of us think that where we are is the best place for us to be because there's no challenge. And so as long as I got my golden ticket to heaven, as long as I feel safe, 
then I'm going to stay right here. But I'm telling you this morning that the safe space is not the safe space. The supernatural space is the safe space. When you find yourself in a conflict, when you find yourself in a challenge, when you find yourself in a storm, you've got to ask God, God, uh -huh, come on, come on, God, it's time for you to do something supernatural. And I don't want to just stay right here, but I'm trying to learn something with you and from you. And I need you to invite me into the supernatural. Now, why you keep talking about the supernatural? Because I told you before, many of us are bored in our faith because there's no adventure. Oh, yeah. yeah many of us, are, are th we think that, that the pandemic has waned our faith, but it wasn't the pandemic. The pandemic didn't wane your faith. The pandemic exposed your lack of faith. And that's because you have not invited God into your life to do the supernatural. We like this, and there's nothing wrong with it. We go to church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We pay what we need to pay, and we go home. But I'm telling you, there's another realm. There is another dimension. There is another level in God that he wants to invite us to so that he can show us that, that what we are seeing and what we are experiencing is not the total, the sum total of what he's able to do. But he can, even in the midst of what you're going through, he can take you to the realm of the supernatural. Well, the Bible says that Peter, after Jesus says, come, the Bible says, Peter, got out of the boat. I don't want you this morning to worry about, and this is what you need to learn from this message. Stop worrying about everybody else's moves. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Stop focusing on social media and looking at everybody else's feet. Stop worrying about and comparing yourself to what everybody else in your family is doing. It's time to focus on your own feet. I want you to learn from Peter's feet how to focus on your own feet. Come on. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Y'all not talking back to me the way I want you to, but that's all right. I'm gonna preach y'all anyhow. Yes, I am too. I'm gonna show you how to focus on your own feet. Well, the Bible says, this is the first point, that Peter's feet shows us that we should never be stuck. Write that down. I said, Peter's feet shows us that our feet should never be stuck. Every, y'all remember that song, It's But The Promise Sunday, so let's sing it. Y'all remember that? Uh, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Uh, every round goes higher and higher. Every round. Y'all remember that song that we used to sing in Sunday school and on, on Children's Day? Y'all remember? You, we should never be okay with being stuck. If, if where you are is where you've been over the past 10 years in your faith walk, it's time to look at your feet. If you have not seen God in a greater way through this pandemic after we've been in it almost two years, it's time for you to examine your feet because you might just be stuck. You know, we lose a lot of people in the Christian faith. We lose a lot of individuals when they start going through struggles and challenges because they think, hear me this morning, they think that their faith is supposed to eradicate and alleviate struggles. And they get stuck in the storm because they don't trust God to move them from where they are to where he wants them to be. And they don't realize that the storm is the mode of transportation to get you to understand that Jesus moves even in the midst of a bad situation. Do you not realize that you serve a good God even on the worst day? You serve an all-powerful God even when it seems like everything is under control. But you've got to realize that when the storm comes, it's not time for me to get stuck. It's time for me to move my feet. I want to challenge somebody this morning. You lost something. You've endured something. You've gone through something. You're going Going through something right now. You're dealing with the biggest storm of your life. You're going through hell and nobody knows about it. And you think that you can sit in the house with your blinds drawn, wearing dirty pajamas. You sit there and you're depressed and you're despondent and you're disgusted. I'm telling you, don't get stuck there. It's time to move your feet. It's time to move. It's time to move past where you are and say, God, invite me into the supernatural. 
and he wants to do it for you. Well, this Bible is full of supernatural happenings, not so that we can read about it and say, oh, wow. No, it's so that God can elevate our faith so that he can do what was done in the Bible in our lives. Don't get stuck. You ain't got no money. That's all right. Don't get stuck. Children acting crazy. That's all right. Don't get stuck. You, your doctor turned his back on you and said there ain't nothing that they can do. That's wonderful. Don't get stuck there. Tell God, God, I am not going to get stuck on this boat in the middle of the storm. But if every if everybody else's feet is stuck, I'm going to bust a move. I'm telling you, this is the time to bust a move. This is the time for you to say, God, I've been in this place too. You done prayed that same prayer. You read that same scripture. You sang that same song for 20 25 years. It's time to move your feet and move to the next level. Well, Peter's feet shows us that our feet shouldn't be stuck because Peter got out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And listen to what it says. And walked on the water. Peter's feet shows us that our feet should start something. Well, is he talking about my, my physical feet or my spirit? I'm talking about your spiritual feet. Because some of us, we make, a lot of, we make a lot of moves in the earth, but it, it does not do anything for the eternal. We walk around the mall, praise God, Walmart, Target, glory to be to God, Safeway and all them other places. I'm talking about spiritual feet. You got to start somewhere. Peter made up in his mind Andrew and Bartholomew and Matthew and Mark. Y'all know what? We, we, we canonize books of, of disciples who didn't even step out on the water. Many people don't even realize that there's a gospel of Peter that was not canonized. Peter was the only one in this situation that dared to step out and do something, to start something that had never been done before. And his book has, many people have not even read the book of, of Peter. Not while Matthew was on the boat, Mark was on the boat. Luke was on the boat. Peter said, I'm about to start something. If you're waiting, I told you this last week, if you're waiting for everybody else's feet to start moving, you waiting for everybody else to go to church. You waiting for everybody else to agree with your prayer life. You're waiting for everybody else to pray like that. You're never going to move because people like other people to be stuck like they are. If Listen, and you cannot take constructive criticism from people that have never constructed anything. You cannot depend on people to help you start something when they have not started anything in their own life. You cannot depend on people to help you to move when they haven't moved. You got to trust God in this season. You got to depend. Listen, Proverbs 3, you better hear it. You better understand it and you better embody and embrace it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will help you to start it. And I want to know, what are you scared of? Listen, if Peter hadn't started walking, because a lot of people think that he took just one. He, he took one and, and then he's, no, no, no. He was walking, which signifies that not only did he start, but he was successful. Do you not realize that your success is all about the start? Now, don't get stuck at start, but the success of it starts at the start. Many of us, God wants to do something crazy in our lives, but because we won't start, he can't help us succeed. All right, I gotta let you go. I'm just, I just want you to know that it, st when, you, when, if you're worried about everybody else's feet, well, you know what? There ain't nobody else doing anything, so I think I'm all right. You cannot depend on everybody else's feet. Peter is trying to show us I got my own feet. Can you put that in the chat? Stop worrying about I got my own feet. If nobody else wants to do it, that's all right. If nobody else wants to trust God, that's all right. If nobody else wants to pray with me, that's all right. I got my own feet. If nobody else supports me, if nobody else pats me on the back, if nobody else hits me up on social media and tell me good job, that's all right. I'm good with it. I'm cool with it because I have learned through the word of God, I got my own feet, got my own feet. And I don't need nobody else to validate in me what Christ has put in me. It's a divine dare. But lastly, Peter's feet shows us not to never let our feet get stuck. Peter's feet shows us to let our feet start. But lastly, 
Peter's feet shows us to get to stepping. It's I, I like it's, it's steps, but I like get to stepping because look where Peter in the storm, winds and waves, crashing, rain, all of that. But look where Peter's feet were going. Where were his steps going? They were going towards Jesus. What? Where was Peter for? His steps were focused on getting to Jesus. That's really what I want you to hear this morning is that is that when you are facing the storm of your life, it's not just an opportunity for God to do something that you would look back 20 years and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. And yes, you need that testimony. But it's an opportunity for you to show God that God, not only am I willing to step out of my comfort zone, not only am I willing, God, to not worry about what everybody else on my boat is doing, but Father, I'm willing to beeline it straight to you. Many of us, we backwalked. We backtracked. We said, you know what? This thing ain't working for me. Forget all of this. You know what? I gave up my life for this. I, I, you mean to tell me I done did all of this and this is what I'm going? No, no, no. This is your chance to show Jesus I'm not backing up and to show the devil because the devil, that's what he wants. He wants to steal, kill and to destroy. He wants to destroy your faith and kill your faith and, and, and to steal everything that the Lord has promised you. You got to say, you know what, devil? I know I'm in a storm and I know that Jesus is the reason I'm in this storm. But watch this. My feet are moving and they're moving towards Jesus. I'm going to pray like I never prayed. I'm going to trust God like I never trusted God. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to praise him like I've never praised him. I'm going to keep my eyes on the prize. I, and I'm not talking about, the, hallelujah, thank God for I answer. I'm not talking about that prize. I'm talking about keeping my eyes on Christ and Christ alone. Because it's on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking. Said, I want you to know this morning, Whenever you go through a season, a storm, a struggle, a challenge, use that as an opportunity to move your feet closer to God. Don't you let the devil trick you and make you think that that's your opportunity to give up. Dietrich Haddon had a song that says, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. Peter's feet. I don't care what your sister's feet are doing. I don't care what your cousin's feet are doing. Don't care what your mama's feet are doing. L look at your own feet. And if nobody else is moving, if nobody else is trusting God, move your feet closer to Jesus. If you're here this morning, I believe that somebody needs to move their feet to Jesus this morning. You're watching and you really didn't come here to do this. But the Lord's got a neon sign on Buds of Promise Day, a green sign over your head, in your house, on that couch, and telling you, you need to move your feet to me. It's been long enough. Many of us, we've been in a pandemic spiritual rut, and we ought to be honest about it. We, we, we have really been lax and relaxed in our faith. But today, you hear God calling you and saying, I, it's time for me to move my feet closer to Jesus. If you've never given your life to Christ. This is the first call. You've never given your life to Christ. And you hear God calling you to come. Come to me. Come on. And you ain't got nothing to lose. Do you think 72 of us would be on here on a Sunday morning, early on a Sunday? Because we don't think God is real. He's real. And all he wants you to do is trust him. If you're here this morning, you've never given your life to Christ. Or if you are here, second call, and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you're saved. But you know something happened and it caused you to walk away from God instead of walking closer to him. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's so simple. It's not complex. And I want you to trust God as you're saying these words. Trust God and believe that his word is true. Say, dear God, I know that I'm not perfect. But I thank you for your word today that told me to move my feet. I'm moving my feet to you, Jesus, today. I accept you as my personal savior. I believe that you died on the cross to save me. And I confess my sins today to you. And I ask that you will wash me and cleanse me.
fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may be better than I've ever been before. Thank you, Lord, for coming into my life. Thank you, Lord, for coming into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe according to the word of God that you are saved. God has saved you today. And I pray that you will find a church where you can move your feet closer to Jesus. If you gave your life to Christ this morning, we want to celebrate with you publicly. Just put in the chat, I gave my life to Christ. If you rededicated your life to Christ, we just want to celebrate with you. It's a public declaration to let the devil know he's a loser. Just say, I rededicated my life to Christ. If you want to do it privately, you can do it the same way. 916-457-8015. Call us as soon as this service is over. Tell us, I gave my life to Christ. My name is. Or email us, Church at comcast.net. You can do it privately and say, my name is. I gave my life to Christ. I rededicated my life to Christ so that we can get in contact with you and make sure you have everything you need on your faith walk. If you don't have a church home this morning, regardless of where you are across the world and you want to make Kyle's Temple Sacramento your home, we would love to be your family. I would love to be your pastor as we advance the kingdom of God. There's nothing better than having a, 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 a no limit soldier for God in another state that can say, you know what, I'm going to help you on your faith journey right here in Texas or right here in Missouri. And we would love to partner with you this morning. Is there one? Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, we got one. Ah, we got two. If y'all, it's time to celebrate, family. It's time to celebrate. Mm -hmm. It's time. It's time. One save. Hallelujah. I see another. Rededication. It's time. Can I can I get some, some real Christians, some real believers to celebrate with these individuals who have made a public declaration to follow Jesus Christ? Glory to God. Is there another? Is there another? Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Well, I, I'm going to do it when we get back in the building. Please don't wait. Please don't wait. Please don't wait. Do it now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. Do it while you have blood running warm in your veins. Do it now while you still got breath in your body. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. You want to join Kyle's temple. Don't miss your opportunity. Glory to God. We'll wait. We're willing to wait on you. Because I know sometimes when you're in your house by yourself, you know, the enemy will tell you, you ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to move your feet. You fine. You doing all right. Mm -hmm. He's a liar. You know, the Bible says the devil is a father of lies. There's no truth in him. Defy the devil and call him a loser and give your life. Just type it. Just I dare you to. I'm a, I gave my life to Christ. I rededicate. I want to join the church and let the devil know he does not have control over you. Is there another? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to move, but I, if you feel the call of God, you can still do it privately. Amen. Don't, don't be afraid to call us, email us, 916-457-8015, or email us, Church at comcast.net. We want to help you on your faith walk. It's a faith walk. That's what it's called. It's a faith walk. Amen. It's a journey to get us to where God, to our eternal destiny. Glory to God. Well, I want to invite you to help us do ministry to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Through tithe, the returning the Lord's tithe and giving an offering unto the Lord. Amen. There's no offering or too small or too great for the kingdom of God. Let's honor God with all of that we have. Amen. You can give in four ways. You can give by cash app, which is on your phone. Download the cash app app and then type in dollar sign Kyle's Temple. You can give that way. You can also give on Givelify, which is another app on your phone. Download Givelify and look up Kyle's Temple Amy Zion Church, Sacramento. You'll see this big head and you can give there. You can also zell us uh, through your direct bank account at KT Amy Zion Church at Comcast.net. You can also mail it to us at 2940 42nd Street, Sacramento, California, 95817, or drop it off by the church office Monday through Friday, noon to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And again, we thank you. Amen. Because we know that God blesses his people and in obedience to his word, the people bless the house. So we thank you for your dedication and your diligence. Amen. And we don't give praise the Lord uh, 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 for, for, for pews and windows. We give so that men and women can be saved. Amen. Amen. So we thank you 
for continuing to sow so that God can do what he needs to do through his church. Amen. I'm going to leave that up just for a minute, but I invite you, amen, to stop looking at everybody else's feet and stop comparing yourself to everybody else. Glory to God. But look at your own feet. And if nobody else moves in 2022, that's all right. Nobody else wants to be sold out for Jesus in your family. That's totally fine. Amen. You got to go to heaven all by yourself. Amen. We don't have no 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 caskets. Amen. Uh, for two individuals at the same time. You got to go on your own. Amen. So move your feet. Move your feet. And that's in every area of life, of your life, financially, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. Praise God. Mentally move your feet. Don't get stuck where you are and don't get stuck in the last storm of your life. Move your feet closer to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we want to thank you for joining us in worship this morning. We want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning. It is a privilege and honor to always come into your home. And I invite you to like and share this on whatever virtual platform you're on, even if you're on conference call. Send somebody the number and tell them you need to worship with us today. Amen. You need to worship with us next Sunday. You need to be in Bible study. You need to be in Sunday. You never know. Somebody is waiting on you to invite them. Amen. Because they're starving spiritually. And they need the word of God in their life. Let us look to God to be dismissed and to bless our offering, the gift and the giver. Amen. Let us look to God. And please remember at noon, amen, so hop off, get you a little lunch and come on back at noon. Amen. As we celebrate the new ministry of Brother Keith Johnson. Amen. Zoom, YouTube and Facebook. God bless you. Let us look to God to be dismissed. God, we're so thankful for our, what you have said to us today. We never take it lightly when we can hear a word from Jesus Christ and the triune God. Thank you, Lord, for opening up the door of heaven and speaking directly to us that this, this is the day, not just that you've made, but this is the day for us to move our feet. Some of us, God, have been stuck. Some of us, God, have never started. And Lord, some of us, we just need to make some steps closer to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving. Thank you, Lord, for the rededications. And thank you, Lord, even after this is over, that, Lord, you're going to be working, Lord, in our spirits and in our minds, that, Lord, we will continue to move closer to you, even when we find ourselves in the storm. Thank you, Lord, for every gift, every giver, and the spirit in which it is given. I pray, oh God, that not that, not that we will lack no good thing, but God, I pray that you will blow our minds even financially as we trust you with what you have already given to us. Father, may it all be used to advance your kingdom that men, women, boys, and girls may be saved. And God, on this Maria Clinton Day, this Victoria Richardson Day, God, continue to anoint and bless and touch our children and our youth. God, keep them from all danger, seen and unseen. God, give them the victory that the enemy will have no place in their lives. God, or cause them to be misdirected and to do things that are not pleasing to you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say together, amen. Amen and amen. Before you get off, just put in the chat, I'm going to move my feet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move my feet. Hallelujah. God, have a blessed day and a blessed week. Hope to see you soon. And remember that God loves you. We do too. Amen. And you're never stuck. You can always move from where you are and move closer to Jesus. God bless you. See you at noon.